Hey there, everyone. We are live. Uh, we got some fun stuff for you guys today. So today uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about what Mr. Mike started us on uh, on Sunday about being on our own, but not alone. And then we have a special guest who's going to be making an appearance later on and uh, a little bit of fun stuff uh, that we haven't done yet. So i um, hoping to see you guys uh, join us and uh, come on in and let us know what's going on. We would love to be able to pray with you and chat with you a little bit later on. Uh, after we're all done with the service. So, okay, guys, so today we have a few fun things for you. And like Mr. Brennan posted earlier, cool. Like Mr. Brennan posted earlier, we're going to start off with a little bit of praise and worship. So, um, and then uh, Mr. Brennan's telling a story. We're going to have a life lesson with Tina, crazy. And um, then we're going to talk about our memory verse. So, um, okay. So if you got our uh, little PDF earlier of the, of the song lyrics that we're going to be doing, we're just going to do two today. The first one is I am a C, right? We've been doing that in children's church. And if you didn't um, put things down, Mr. Brandon has cards that he's going to hold up and he's going to try and keep up with us. There we go. He's getting he's getting them all ready. Okay. We're going to see if he's able to keep up. And then um, we also are going to have um, we're going to have our uh, song Tremble. Now, uh, in in the adult service, um, you do the whole song. But uh, for kids church, we usually only do part of it. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. OK, so um, if you are ready, we're going to do our I am a C song. We're going to start off nice and slow. And then we are going to speed it up a little bit. So we're going to see if you can catch up. We can get, we're going to see if um, Mr. Brandon can catch up. All right. All right. You ready? I sure hope so. Okay. Get that first card on there. You can't even get the first card guys. Okay. Here we go. Nice and slow. Okay. All right. So if you are in your living room, around your dining table, wherever you are, sing out nice and loud. If you know this song. Okay. Here and we go. Make sure you have nothing that you can knock over as you're moving your arms around and kicking and screaming and having lots of fun. Don't kick and scream. That'll be weird. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Nice and slow. All right. I am a C. Here we go. I am a C. There you go. I am a C H. Good job, guys. I am a C H R I S T I A N. Good job. And I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T and I will L I V E E T E R N A L L Y. All right, a little bit faster. I am a C. I am a C H. There you go. I am a C H R I S T I A N. Good job. And I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L L Y. I am a C. I am a C H. I am a C H R I S T I A N. There you go. And I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L L Y. I am a C. I am a C H. I am a C H R I S T I A N. able to keep up with us i think he cheated a little bit he had like the flipping thing going on that's all he had to do um no all right cheats. guys uh audrey says great flipping brandon there's mighty singing flipper. here okay good job good job singing guys okay we just have one more song and it's tremble and if you guys remember we used to do the song in children's church and we will do it again when we get back together um but i just want to talk to you about it really quick so part of the song says um, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. So I want you to imagine that you are in a room that's completely dark. 
Okay, maybe it's your bedroom, maybe it is your sitting room, maybe it's your dining room, but just room, just imagine that there's no light in there at all. The, the windows are all closed, the lights are shut off, everything. Okay, and then imagine that you have a torch in your hand. So everybody grab your imaginary torch, imaginary torch, and you walk into that room and you click on the torch. What happens to the darkness? Does the darkness get to say, I don't want it to be light in here. I'm just gonna stay and I'm not gonna move over. No, that's not what happens, right? The, the light comes in and the darkness has to go, okay? It's not, it's not a matter of arguing back and forth. When you turn the light on, the darkness has to run away. And that's exactly how it is for us. When we have Jesus, he is light, right? And when we turn that light on and we trust in the Lord, all of that darkness, which is like our fears, um, things that we might be worried or sad about, those things don't like get solved all of a sudden, but we don't have to feel so afraid or upset about them. And so we're going to sing the song together. And if you um, have your page printed out, now would be a good time to get it out. Mr. Brandon, can you show us what that page looks like? This is what Mr. Brandon made earlier. So if you have that, take it out. This, song, this part of the song that we're going to sing is pretty simple. Um, but if you have it, go ahead and take it out. And if you don't have it, then just listen. I'll, I'll try and kind of help you with this, okay? But all we're gonna do is the Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Just remember all the things that we're upset about, sad about, afraid about, those things are afraid of Jesus. And so we can take comfort knowing that when we stand with Jesus, we don't have to be afraid, right? Okay, so we're gonna do Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. And then the next part we're going to sing is your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Just like we said, if you turn on that torch, that darkness in that room has to go. Okay, so we'll start with Jesus. All right, guys, and I want to hear you sing. I know I can't like really hear you, but let your your brothers and your sisters and your parents and whoever's there with you sing nice and loud. Everybody sing together. Okay. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. All right, sing that again. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Sing it out loud, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. That part one more time, Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you 
silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus Jesus, we thank you that you are with us and that, God, you are like that light. When you turn on that light, Lord, the darkness has to run away. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are on our side. We get to be on your side and you are with us, Lord, and you're giving us strength. We love you, Jesus. Help us to listen right now as Mr. Brandon comes with us to a le- with <laughs> to us with a lesson. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much that you're with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Very cool. Today, all right, I'm going to be telling you a story from the Bible. It is found in Daniel chapter 6. And so for those of you who have your Bibles with you, if you want to open up your Bible to Daniel chapter 6, that would be absolutely fantastic and awesome. Now, I'm not going to read you the story from most of our normal Bibles. I'm going to read you the story from the Jesus Storybook Bible today. And it is, again, it's found in Daniel chapter 6. So if you want to read that later on your own to get a full grasp of everything that's going on, that'd be fantastic and awesome. Or if you just want to track along with what we're doing in our story today, I'll be happy to read it for you. Now, what we do in children's church all the time is we have our head, heart, and hands. And so our head point is the thing that I want you guys to learn about today. And Mr. Mike told us a little bit about this last week or on Sunday, rather, uh, as he was teaching us about Paul. And he was saying that we're on our own, but we're not alone. And I want to tell you guys today in our story in Daniel chapter six, that Daniel was on his own, but he was not alone. And that also applies to us. And so as I'm going through our story today, I want you to pay super close attention to all the places in our story that you might be able to see how Daniel was on his own, but he wasn't alone. And so once we're done reading our story, I'm going to ask you guys some questions, and then you're going to help me fill in this part with the heart, because that's where we see where our main point is in the main part of our lesson or in our story in our lesson phase. So without further ado, I'm going to read you a story. This is from Daniel chapter six. And in the Jesus Storybook Bible, it's called Daniel and the Scary Sleepover. It says, things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken far from home, and now they were slaves of the king of Babylon. But God had not left his people. He was with them, and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed him. Now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things. So it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. King Darius liked how clever Daniel was. So he made Daniel his most important helper of all and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like this. They wanted the king to like them best. They wanted to get rid of Daniel, so they spied on Daniel. They tried to find things wrong with Daniel, things that they could use to tell the king, things they could, but there weren't any. None. They couldn't find anything at all, except there was just the one thing. Every day, three times a day, without fail, No matter what, Daniel went to his room, closed his eyes, closed the door, and prayed. They smiled to themselves, let's go to the king and make a law. No one is allowed to pray to anyone except to the king. Daniel won't obey this law, and he will be punished. They were pleased with themselves for being so clever, and they hurried off to tell the king. The king liked their idea. He didn't know that they were tricking him. So he made it into a law. Everyone must pray only to me, the king. If you don't, oh, if you don't, the lions will have you for their dinner. Daniel heard this. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. He had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant that he would die. So Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and prayed. That's just what the bad men knew Daniel would do. They skipped straight off to tell the king, Oh, your most glittering highness, your law says, does it not, that everyone must pray to you alone, sire? Yes, said the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, then correct us if we're wrong, but it would seem that Daniel is praying to God and not to you. The king was sad. He had been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel, but he couldn't change the law, and so he let the soldiers throw Daniel to the lions. May your God, who loves you so much, rescue you, the king said. The king went back to his palace, but he didn't sleep that night. Not a wink. 
He tossed and turned until finally, at the first glimmer of dawn, he leaped out of bed and ran straight to the den. Daniel, he cried, has your God rescued you? Yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouths. And there, resting his head on Daniel's lap, was the biggest lion purring like a little kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Look, he said, Daniel doesn't even have a scratch. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people, and the time was coming when God would send another brave hero like Daniel, who would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. And together they would pull off the greatest rescue the world has ever known. So guys, I need your help here. I want you to tell me if there was anywhere in our story that you saw or heard about how Daniel was on his own, but he was not alone. If you'll have your parents type that into the comments field, Miss Ernie's gonna help me by letting me know what some of you guys are saying. So if you have any ideas, now would be the time. Let me know what you heard. The question is, where in our story did we see that Daniel was on his own, but he was not alone? I think Daniel was on his own, but he wasn't alone when he was in the king's court. Are there any other spots that you can see? I think Daniel may have felt like he was on his own when he was worshiping God. He probably felt like there was nobody else that was worshiping God, that he was the only one. But even though he may have been the only one, he wasn't on his own. He was still right there with God and God was right there with him. How about another one here? When Daniel prayed. Daniel was the only one that was praying to God. Nobody else was. He was all by himself in doing that. But when he was praying to God, he was not on his own. He was or he wasn't alone. God was still right there with him. And Daniel continued to pray even after the new law was made. When the king said, nobody's going to pray to anybody but me, and if you do, you're going to get in trouble. So Daniel was alone again there as well. But even though he was on his own, he wasn't alone. God was with him. And then the biggest one, one that I'm sure most all of you had, was when Daniel was in the lion's den. When he was in the lion's den, there was nobody in there to help him out. It was just him, him and the big old scary lions. But like Daniel said, God was not going to leave him there alone. He sent an angel to close the mouth of the lions. And so those lions didn't harm him or hurt him in any way. Daniel was on his own, but Daniel was not alone. We have some answers. We have some answers. So Leanna had said... Daniel was in the lion's den. Perfect. Very nice. And Shaw right said lion's den again. Nice. When he was in the lion's den, because God was with him, that's Leah. He felt alone, but God was with him. That's Very good. That's from the Gaysons. Um, Lily says when Daniel was with the big lions, the lion's den from the Moors, and in his room praying. In his room praying. Very, very good. So those are all the same ones that I was thinking of. So you guys are very, very smart, and I'm exceedingly proud of you. That's fantastic and awesome. So we see that even though Daniel was on his own, he was not alone. And sometimes we may feel like we're on our own, but God is still right there with us, and we're not alone. And so Daniel noticed this when he was in the king's court, where there was nobody else that was there that was like him, all the other uh, Hebrews they, they didn't have special jobs like he had. So he was the only one that was there praising and worshiping God. And so when he worshiped God, there was none of the other leaders and the other smart people and the helpers to the king that worshiped God. It was Daniel all by himself. And then when Daniel was praying, he didn't have anybody else there to pray along with him. It was just him. But, you know, through all of that, he wasn't alone. So what does this mean for us? That's what the hand right down here is for. What does this mean for us? If, if we're on our own, but we're not alone, what can we do with this information? What does that mean for us in our Christian walk? 
If you have any answers, now would be the time to put them into the comments. I'm going to start you off with one right here. I think the very first one that we need to see and that we need to understand is that we may feel like we're on our own, but we're not alone. And that means for us that the Lord is by our side. And because the Lord is by our side, that means that, that we can trust him. We can have faith that whatever it is that's making us feel alone or feel on our own, that, that God's still right there with us. And we're not alone because he's right there with us. He's by our side all Ryan the time. says, God is always with us. God is always with us. Very good. Any other answers? That's a fantastic answer, Leah. Well done. How about this one? Because God is always with us, God gives us strength to handle whatever it is that we're facing. So God gives us strength. God gave Daniel strength to continue to pray even when he knew the king said it was wrong, even though we know that's not wrong. Always praying to God, that's the right thing to do. But praying to somebody else who's not God, that's the wrong thing to do. And so Daniel needed the strength to do the right thing, even though it was a rule that was made that he couldn't do the right thing. Daniel had the strength to do it and continue on with it. And so that's pretty awesome. If we feel alone now, we need to realize that we're not. God's right there by our side the whole time. And he can give us the strength to stand up against whatever circumstances and whatever situation we're in, and it's all going to be okay. And so I think if you're feeling on your own or you're feeling alone, first of all, realize that you're not. And if you still feel that way, we need to continue to worship God. Jack says, that's part of the memory verse. Ah, very good, Jack. Continue to worship God through our circumstances, through whatever it is that's on our way, that's there in front of us, the difficult things that we're facing. We need to continue to worship God. And when we do that, God's going to give us the strength that we need, just like Jack was saying. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that memory verse here in just a moment. So with that, Thank you guys for paying attention to our lesson. Thank you for adding your comments into the field. Remember, we may be on our own, but we are not alone. And we see that in the Bible today through what happened to Daniel. Daniel was on his own, but he was not alone. And you may feel like you're on your own, but you're not alone either. God is right there with you. Well, guys, I want to pass it on to a new thing we're going to be doing here. I introduced you to a friend of mine a little while ago, last week sometime, and this is a very, very cool friend, and she's going to help me out with another, right here, Life Lessons with Tina. All right, Tina, are you there? Whoa, Tina, there you are. It's so good to see you again. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm good. You're good. Very I'm cool. Good. Tina, um, this is our Life Lessons with Tina segment, and so do you have a life lesson that you want to share with us? Well, you know, last time I was talking about washing your hands. Washing you know, hands. your hands. Everybody show Very me your hands. Very important. Yep, that's there right. There you go. Got to wash your and hands. And I was talking about how we need to wash them. Do you know why we need to wash them? To keep the germs off of us. Basically, yeah. look at your hands. Look at them. Look, there you go. I'm, I'm looking at, at my hand. Yep, Basically, you your hand is a trap for disgusting. Okay, a trap for disgusting. All yeah, right. everything you touch, you know, everything you everything you put your hand on, germs get on there and they get stuck. It so, gets stuck. Okay. so my life lesson is that you should not touch your face. To, to not touch your face. Okay. Right, just don't touch your face too don't much. Don't touch your face, that's yeah, right. But, but, because, because whatever's on your hands could get on to your face. If you, yeah, if but look at my hair. But your hair your hair is pretty look spectacular and amazing. Look at my hair. No, oh. I, all the salons are closed. Okay. So that, does that mean that... that so look, Tina, look, my, my hair is getting in my eyes. Hold T on. Tina. You, yes, you, okay. You, so, Tina, oh, life lesson, right. Yeah. So don't touch your face yeah, like, with like, your hands. Like what you're doing right there. No, I, well, I was brushing my hair yeah. 
yeah, away but, from my eyes. Yeah, because but you're you're not not supposed to like touch your face. Right. right. Don't yeah. touch your face. That's what like, I said. Like, stop don't touch touching. Stop touching your face right now, no, wait, Tina. I was Tina, just what, Tina. What? You're what? touching your face. You can't touch your face. Oh. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, well. And what? What if I? What if I? What if I just brush? No, it out? Tina. Tina. Tina, quit touching your face. Okay. Kids, th this okay. has been another life lesson with Tina. Tina, quit touching your face. I can't believe that. Okay. So, well, um, Tina needs to maybe practice a little bit of what she preaches there. But uh, there you have another life lesson from Tina. Don't touch your face. If you've got like dirty hands and stuff, you know, wash your hands and keep washing your hands, but but don't don't wash your face. Guys, I'm going to ask Miss Ernie to come back and she's going to tell us a little bit about the memory verse that Mr. Mike told us about on Sunday. And so we have a uh, sheet that has been created for you guys that has our memory verse on there. And uh, you can download that or we'll put it up in the comments field uh, here on the Calvary Cork Life so that you can download that and uh, copy that and print it and then color it and show it to us. And so Mr. Ernie, tell us a little bit about what we got going on. Okay guys, so if you were able to listen to Mr. Mike's teaching on Sunday, he shared a verse with us and said was our new memory verse for this week. And so we wanna be really diligent to study it and to learn more about it. So we made a little coloring page for you. Okay, and we're just gonna read that out to you. So it's sec 2 Timothy, sorry, I say 2 Timothy sometimes, but it's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. It says, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. And so we're going to put this into um, a post right after we get done with this live video. And you can download it um, and color it at home. And so when you color it, you can color all the letters. And I think these letters are pretty cool. You can see they've got some uh, they've got some places where you can put color in then. And then they've got this little shadow area and little lines and stuff. And you can draw some things out here. But I want you to also pay attention to this little box. Can anybody read that? It says, draw a picture of how God is giving you strength right now. Okay, and so this verse says, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. So, you know, sometimes, you know, like Mr. Brandon was saying, um, Daniel might have felt like he was alone, but he wasn't alone. Who was with him? Do you guys remember? I'm going to look on our, our, our um, comments are still not populating on our computer, but we're looking at our phone here and it's showing us. Okay, um, so who was with Daniel? He wasn't by himself, right? The Bible says that he was not by himself and God helped him, right? And um, it even says the angel closed the mouth of the lions. And so Daniel wasn't by himself and we're not by ourselves. And not only does God stand by us, isn't that comforting? If God was like right next to you, he's bigger and stronger than anything. And he is gonna give us strength. So yeah, so you're gonna be able to download this and then draw a picture of, draw a picture of how God is giving you strength right now. Okay, so we're gonna put that into a new post right after our uh, live video is finished. You guys are great, thank you so much, bye. bye.